Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Talks Japandi, I'm going to be talking to you about why you should start a YouTube channel if you study abroad in Japan. Coming up. So yeah guys, we out here at the good old coin laundry out here in Nakano, Tokyo, Japan. And I wanted to do a video response today to a good old buddy of mine, Jim from the Kid Shoryuken channel. He's a fellow US military veteran just like myself. Uh, he was in the Air Force and I was in the Navy. But in any event, uh, today I want to do a response to him talking about why you should start a YouTube channel. Now, originally I was going to do this on just my regular old The Andy San channel, but I wanted to make this video a bit more Japan centric. So we're just going to narrow it down to why you should start a video if you come to study abroad out here in in Japan or anywhere really in the world. But these can be applied to starting a YouTube channel in general, so it's not just narrowed down to traveling stuff. Just for a little bit of context on ya boy, the Indy San Samadeshta, I started on YouTube way back in the day, way back on March 1st, 2006. It's a long ass time. And I originally signed up for YouTube just to leave comments because back in the day uh, for video sharing websites, it was all curated. So it would go through a mod or some other type of admin before it was put up on their website as it was deemed worthy enough, whether it's usually funny or amazing or just otherwise noteworthy. And the cool thing about YouTube was that anybody could post pretty much anything. And this was before the Viacom lawsuit and all this other stuff. It was definitely the Wild West back then. Everybody was just kind of posting whatever. But this also began the rise of user-generated content on a regular basis. So versus back in the day, somebody might submit like a viral video and that'd be it for them. This was the beginning of regular series-based content around just regular old people. Now you also had uh, some series-based content, you know, like you had ABGN, you also had Nostalgia Critic, and a bunch of others as well. For me, I got really interested in the J-vlogging scene, and so a lot of the early creators from that era, you had Tokyo Kuni, the late great Roger Swan, and with the YouTube system, it also allowed you to sign up, and uh, if you started an account, you could leave comments on uh, your favorite creator's videos. You could also subscribe to them as well. So whereas before you'd have to go back and like check the site just to see if you know your favorite creator uploaded something, this would just send you a little email ping saying, hey, Tokyo Kuni uploaded a new video. Hey, Tokyo Swan uploaded a new video. And so it was for those two reasons that I decided to start my YouTube account in the first place. And it wasn't until a couple years later when I decided to make videos on my own. Now granted, before that, the only other videos that were up on my YouTube page were stuff from, you know, my friends. Um, little clips of uh, their karate class, tournaments, things like that. Um, my friend Ben's uh, band practice back in the day. And just other random little doodads and things like that. But it wasn't until 2008 when I got my own camera to where things really took off for me as a creator. And I was able to make whatever, whenever. Didn't have to borrow my friend's camera anymore. Originally I started vlogging just so I could put it up on my own website. And it was just a way to kind of differentiate content back then because before I started YouTube, I was a blogger. And I saw vlogging as just kind of an accompaniment to uh, just regular old text-based vlogs. And once I really got into the weeds of vlogging and really started doing it on a regular basis is when I became a lot more interested in it than I did blogging. And subsequently, my blog posts became less and less frequent and my vlogs became a lot more consistent. But I do have to say that uh, I wasn't really very well received by the community just because whenever anybody starts something, there's always gonna be the naysayers saying, ah, oh, you're too cringy, you're too this, you're too that. And especially back in those days, the uh, internet community was a lot more uh, vocal about those sorts of things. The community has since calmed down a lot, and YouTube has also put into place a lot of protective measures against spam and stuff like that. So it's a lot easier to suss those comments out and uh, deal with them accordingly. But regardless, I still kept at it because I enjoyed making videos. 
and just love the video making process. And back then I was also learning video editing as well. Uh, I cut my teeth originally on uh, Sony Vegas Pro back in the day. During that time was also uh, the great recession in America. So jobs were very scarce and I couldn't even get a job working at Walmart or McDonald's or anything really. It got to a point where things become, became very tense in the house and it was either join the military or be homeless. And it was pretty black and white like that because I didn't really have any other place to go. Uh, my friends were just kind of starting their, their own lives and they had little shoebox apartments so they couldn't you know, even have me crash on the couch for a little bit because they didn't have a couch to crash on. So decided, you know, join the military. If anything, I'll be able to get that nice college education at the end of it. During that whole time, I vlogged out my entire experience being in the US Navy from 2010 to 2015. And I'm so glad I did. Even though, looking back at the videos, yeah, they're not the best quality. Yeah, they're not in super crisp 4K or whatever the resolution du jour is when you're watching this video, if you're watching the future, greetings. Regardless, it still is nice to look back at those videos and see where I was uh, during that time in my life and to see uh, all the countries that I visited, all the different little things here and there. It's just so amazing to me. And I'll be able to actually show my kids and grandkids and further on down the line, this is what your dad or grandpa Andy was doing back in the day. Versus, you know, a couple grainy photographs and some uh, sea stories. We'll be actually able to see it in grainy 1080p quality, right? Or 720p for the early shit. So after I got out of the Navy in 2015 and came back to America to go back to school in my 30s, uh, I still continued vlogging, but I didn't quite have this, uh, the sense of purpose that I did back in the day because it was a lot of uh, personal development, a lot of personal rediscovery of who I was. And so I was in a pretty dark place back then. But throughout it all, vlogging helped keep me sane and helped keep some manner of consistency in my life. So no matter what was all going on during that time, I still had vlogging to fall back on and at least I can have some little glimmer of hope, something to work on even during the most trying of times. And it was during that time that I began my career as a freelance video editor. So back in the day, uh, one of my friend's hard drives had crashed, and so he was, he was posting daily content at the time, and I decided to just kind of help him out for all that. And then once he got his hard drive and stuff fixed, he took me on as his editor, and uh, we just kind of went from there. In doing that, I also got referrals to uh, some other people that I worked with, and then those referrals gave me more referrals, and then I continued to grow from there. In the meantime, I was also learning more about uh, video editing programs and just how to be a much more efficient editor so I could uh, get the projects out in a timely manner and just work on more projects. And it really became my passion, I guess, and also a career in, in some sense even though it's still very much in the early stages. And to be honest, I actually enjoy helping other people find their creative vision more, more so than I do my own. So, you know, being able to see uh, the videos that I put together for other people out on their channels and to like read the comments and stuff like that, so it gives me a lot of satisfaction. So I began to transition more to being uh, somebody else's video editor versus just doing stuff on my own. I really want to do YouTube full time, but I realize with changing preferences and YouTube's uh, changing climate as well, it might not be a viable option to do something like that. But there is always the option to sell my skills. So my skills as video editor. And I say this, you know, not with the pretense of, oh, I'm so good and I'm like some super video editor man, but you know, just making some YouTube vids, especially for people who make stuff on the regular, but are just completely befuddled by video editing or it just takes them a long time. Um, I'm more than willing to help those people out. And I think I really found my calling, but I wouldn't have found that had I not started YouTube back in 2006, or had I not bought my first camera off of eBay in 2008. It's just one of those things where I know some people kind of 
give me some crap about, well, Andy, you've been on YouTube for like going on 15 years and you only have so many subscribers and this, that, and the other. But uh, for me, I just do YouTube for fun. Now granted, I like to get paid. I'm working to get uh, this channel monetized and working to build up my other monetized channels. But my main source of money comes from stuff outside of YouTube. To be honest, I'd actually prefer to keep it that way and just having YouTube just be someplace I can upload stuff just for fun. So you notice that a lot of my uploaded content isn't like super well cinematic edited with like cool B-roll and all this other stuff. It's just me talking to people on my phone. Like I'm not even using my DSLR camera. It's easier, it's a lot lighter. You know, when I got that big ass DSLR up there with the heavy lens, you know, I can all hold it for like maybe five minutes and then, you know, my arm's like shaking and stuff. So, should you start a YouTube channel, I would 100% agree. I think everybody has a voice and I think that everybody's voice deserves to be heard. But as far as like making yourself marketably viable or other stuff, that's up to the market to decide. But. That being said, I think everybody should start a YouTube channel, especially if you're studying abroad in a foreign country, you know? I know a lot of um, J vloggers back in the day, even now, started a YouTube channel just to show their friends and family back home what they're doing and what they're up to. And I think, if anything, you should start your channel for that, just to show them what life in a foreign country is like and just kind of get to see how you personally are doing. So I wouldn't say go into YouTube for the sake of money, but just go into it with a sense of connecting with other human beings. Then the money and all this other stuff will, uh, will come afterwards. The Marcus decision is the Marcus decision and that's out of your control. The only thing you can control is you. And for me, like going on 15 years out from uh, starting up my own YouTube channel, um, I have no regrets. So yeah guys, I look forward to hearing what you have to say in the comments down below in the boopity boops. And feel free to post like a little video response in there as well. I'll be uh, looking through the comments and seeing people post uh, video links and stuff like that. It may not appear right away just because of you know YouTube spam, stuff like that. So give it a little bit, but uh, I'll be looking through and keeping an eye on it. And with that said guys, this is the Andy Song. Sign up for now. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.